Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, I'm gonna be showing you guys something incredibly spooky that has to do with a burial site, Native Americans, and a blind man. All three of those things together. So about a week ago, I ended up showing you guys this location in Red Dead Online that would produce fish that spawned at a trough. And while I was there, I noticed something. I noticed something that I thought I had heard before. Now, in case you guys are curious where we are, we are at the Scratching Post, which is right on the edge of the San Luis River, and it's to the southwest of Tumbleweed. So it's basically at the most southern western portion of the map. This is where you're gonna need to head to first. Now, what am I talking about? Why is this location important? Well, as I'm sure you guys know, Blind Man Cassidy is a blind man who can be found wandering around the map of Red Dead Redemption 2, and if you give him a dollar, he'll basically tell you your fortune. I've actually got a dedicated video to him coming up soon. I don't know when that will be, covering some of his secrets and things you might not have known about. But anyways, once you reach the epilogue, Blind Man Cassidy will also venture to the epilogue. And he has one interesting line that on the surface kind of doesn't make sense, but the more you think about it, it's kind of right in front of us. Help a blind man. Here. I see sand and ocean and palm trees. Find the black flower and you will be rewarded. All right. Well, I'll have to take your word for it. So the first thing he says is, I see sand and oceans and palm trees. And then the second thing he says is, find the black flower and you will be rewarded. Okay, so that line right there from Blind Man Cassidy is certainly pretty interesting. But what does he mean by that? You know, there isn't a lot of sand, beaches, oceans, or black flowers in the Red Dead Redemption 2 map. So my first thought was that, you know, this is something that only happens on Guarma. And I was thinking to myself, great, I don't have a save file on Guarma. I'm going to have to, you know, beat Chapter 4 again just to get to Chapter 5 and Guarma. But as I told you guys earlier, I was exploring this cabin, Scratching Post, and I came across this right here. I saw this black potted flower, and wouldn't you know that right behind it is a photo of a beach, palm trees, and the ocean. And it kind of looks like it's Guarman. I was thinking to myself, is this the location Blind Man Cassidy was talking about? because that sort of fits all the things he was describing. But I was looking around, I'm saying to myself, you know, I really don't see any treasure here. Like, what am I going to be rewarded with? All I'm finding are some canned vegetables and bread chunks. And if you go out back, you'll actually notice that there is like this Indian sort of Native American statue going on here. And I was also thinking to myself, wait a minute, I've recognized this before. I've seen this somewhere else at the Native American burial site which is a location we'll go check out in a little bit. And after I noticed that, I noticed a couple of other Indian artifacts scattered around this house as well, like feathers in the windows and you know just objects that you would associate with Native American culture. So this was kind of strange and pay attention to all the things we've seen so far. So once I ended up checking those out, I went back into the house because I wanted to see, you know, what was going on here. Is this the treasure of Blind Man Cassidy? And upon doing some further inspection, I looted the drawer. I got a platinum band, but then there was something else in there. There was something called an ancient necklace. And when I first grabbed it, I was like, okay, is this just another item that I can sell? But it turns out that if you go over it, it is a unique item. And the description is an ancient necklace from a time long ago. So that's kind of interesting. You can't use it, you can't interact with it in any way. So I'm not exactly too sure what is going on with this ancient necklace, but I'm almost certain that it has something to do with like the Native American-esque sort of nature of this cabin that we were here. But that's only the first stop that we're going to be making today. The next stop is going to be at a very interesting location, and that is the Native American burial site. So if you guys have never been here before, it is just to the west of Strawberry. Uh, it's a little bit north of the Owingilla Lake. 
So that's what you're going to look for if you want to find this. And you know you're close if you actually see the symbol of a weapon that's actually at the center of this Native American burial site. And the first thing you're going to notice here is like the same sort of skulls and owl feather design is almost identical to what we saw at that strange cabin scratching post. So that's why I'm saying that these two things are connected. And I don't know if it was because I was holding or had on me the ancient necklace, what's about to happen next. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Now, upon inspecting the site, you guys can see that it is native burial. And John ends up saying, my guess is this place was an Indian burial ground, either that or some other ceremonial place. Now, if you were to just arrive at this site, you'll notice that there's not a whole lot going on. There's that uh, stone hatchet in the center, but other than that, there really isn't anything spooky or anything that's kind of scary or interesting. Just a lot of skulls and spikes and stuff like that. Uh, the one thing I did test at first is if you shoot anywhere near this area, that you're going to get negative honor. So when that happened, the first thing I thought of here was the pagan ritual site, where if you fired your weapon, the same thing would happen. So I was thinking to myself, okay, maybe there is a bigger mystery here than just what we're seeing on the surface level. So the next thing I wanted to do here was maybe this native burial site requires some sort of activation of sorts. So I was thinking to myself, okay, fire has to be the thing that does it. So when I ended up tossing a fire bottle, I noticed that it immediately started raining. And I, I thought, started thinking to myself, uh, well, I thought it was a nice sunny day, but you know, the weather can change. It's super dynamic in Red Dead Redemption 2. So I didn't think anything of it. However, as soon as the fire went out, the rain instantly stopped. It's like there was some outer force that caused rain to occur to put out the fire. I was thinking to myself, that was really creepy. Let's see if we can replicate that again. And sure enough, the same thing happened. The second I throw down a fire bottle on this native burial site, you can see that it begins to rain to put out the fire. And the second that the fire goes out, it returns back to sunny weather. That is incredibly spooky. So I have no idea why something like this is occurring, but it does. And that is really, really weird. Like I said, I have no idea if it has to do with the fact I have this ancient necklace or if this just occurs every single time. And it didn't matter what I threw a fire bottle at, it would always rain. I mean, if this evidence isn't like 100% proof right here, you can literally see clouds disappearing. Like they just vanish out of thin air. So why does that happen and what is going on here? Well, I also think there's something a little bit more to this story. So maybe you guys can help us out with like the layout of the Indian burial ground. It's sort of like a giant circle or like a clock face where you've almost got like different branches going off towards the edge and then a smaller circle in the center where you can actually find the stone hatchet or tomahawk. So maybe there's something to the design of this burial site that I don't understand. It is very ceremonial. There's like tons of little things hanging around the trees uh, in this area. And if you guys thought that was spooky, well, you haven't seen anything yet. So I wanted to replicate this a couple of times because maybe I was thinking to myself, okay, my game is clearly glitched. You know, there's something going on here. So I tried this one more time. And as I was throwing the fire bottles at this native burial site, there was like this weird bolt of lightning that hit or like this flash of sparks. It literally scared me to death. I'm pretty sure I yelped like a little girl here. And as I was throwing down the fire bottles, it just, you can see it struck that rock right there. And I was so shocked when it happened. I started backing up, looking at the sky, looking at the rock. Did it come from there? I wasn't able to replicate this. So I don't know if that was a glitch or if that just once again adds to the mystery of that sort of spooky element of what's going on at this native burial site. Now, really the last thing I wanted to test in this video was, could you do anything with that ancient right, necklace? And it turns out oh, you, you can. Now, I did not want to sell the ancient necklace, but you can. You can actually sell it for $20 at a fence if you want. So it's not worth all that much. And honestly, for me, it was more worth it to hold on to it 
in case there was some sort of special thing it could activate. But nonetheless, just know if you go and get this necklace for yourself, you're not finding a treasure that's worth like a million dollars here. It's gonna be $20 that you can sell it to at the fence. And so far, I have not found any other use for the ancient necklace. Maybe you guys have. Maybe this is just the beginning of this mystery here at the native burial site and scratching post. Maybe there's other locations like scratching post that have sort of similar Native American Indian style layouts that might offer us more clues on how to solve this mystery. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully you did enjoy. As always, if you feel like you can contribute to solving this mystery, let us know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next video.